Hey guys, so just wanted to show you a little SCAR robot prototype I put together. It's just being held with these uh, helping hands, these test indicator holders that I like to use. And I attach these little gripper clamps and just a vise that's uh, weighed down here. And I'm using the same carbon fiber rods that I use for my Delta robot. And I also designed some rod end attachments for um, the, the bearing joints as well as motor mounts for uh, Dynamixel servos as well as uh, just a regular stepper motor attachment. So this particular SCAR robot is called a dual arm SCAR robot or sometimes people will call it a parallel arm SCAR robot and there's several different ways to configure it the way I have it you actually have access 360 degree rotations and there are other configurations where the motors are on the same plane and the joints are spaced further apart and I believe that that configuration is more stable but there's advantages for you know each case so the configuration I'm going with has more of a workspace and speed advantage the other one has more of a uh, stability structural advantage. So in the next video I'll go over these attachments in more detail for the carbon fiber rods and I'll also release the 3D model files and STL files and DXF files. So if you have access to a 3D printer you can 3D print them or if you have access to a CO2 laser you can laser cut them, or you could even make them out of wood. I mean, for a robot this small, it doesn't necessarily need to be made out of aluminum like mine. So these motors are Dynamixel MX12W. I'll take them off the mount here in a second. But I'd never used uh, Dynamixel servos before. What's great about them is the continuous rotation. They have built-in processors inside of the each servo has its own microcontroller that controls the pit control loop so you know when you see from the movement it, it it'll overshoot but it settles where you need it to be so for a lot of applications you don't really care if there's overshoot so i have this just going max torque max speed to the position and then um, whatever i end up doing with it as long as it's where i need it to be when i do that task then it's not really a big deal okay guys so here are the two motors i just took off the mount there i'm going to go ahead and run the same little demo program that you saw in the beginning so several Subscribers have recommended Dynamixel servos before and I'd never got into them and there's definitely a learning curve for them But there are a ton of advantages so you can daisy chain them you can Program in set IDs so if I wanted to for example Daisy chain it like this without even having to do anything else. I just plug in them both. I couldn't do that for uh, the uh, configuration I had because it would have the mo you know the linkages would have ran into the wires but here you can see that I have them daisy chained so that's without even having to do anything and you can daisy chain shut several of these motors together and the best part about them is the, you know, they have a ton of different versions. Uh, I just wanted the fastest one I could find that had a magnetic encoder, which these are. So the MX, I believe, stands for the non-contact magnetic encoders that they have inside. So they have the cheaper series, I think the AX or something like that. But... The lower end models have like a potentiometer type encoder and that will eventually wear down after a while. And even still those weren't as fast as this one. So the main reason I got this was the speed. I think it's 470 RPM. So these have 
an internal processor, like I said, and that controls all of the um, acceleration and torque and current control. There's several different modes you can do. You can, so these were designed for use with robots as the actual wheels of the robot, but I wanted them for the speed. But they are capable of continuous rotation, and if you want to use them how I was using them with the Scara, having multiple turns and still knowing exactly where they are, like returning, like you know, if I take three revolutions and I and I'm at the zero position, but I tell it to go to zero, it'll know to turn back three revolutions to go to the true zero, not just the actual, not the angle, but it'll return all the way back to the, the actual origin that you set. This board is a board I bought. It's called the Open CM. And it's not necessary for using these servos. I just bought it to save myself some time because it already has the connectors and what I need to use. But you can pretty much, and it's the same brand, you know, the actual company that makes the servos is the Korean company. And they make this board. So, so yeah, you could use any board like an Arduino or another microcontroller that you might want to use or if you're programming um, or designing your own board that you want to use these different servos and you know you can daisy chain different models of the servos too okay guys hope you like the video uh, i don't really know exactly where the scara will end up if i'm going to end up with a actual use for it or if i'm going to build a, a frame for it or if i have a different use for these then i might do that so anyway hope you guys like the video and i'll see you guys next time bye